This is David Rode for the New York Times. Last November in Afghanistan, a Taliban commander kidnapped myself, an Afghan journalist I was working with, and our Afghan driver. I was in Afghanistan to write a book about the country and was invited to an interview with a Taliban commander in Logar province, an hour southeast of the capital, Kabul. The commander, who calls himself Abu Tayeb, invited us to the interview. Two other foreign journalists had safely met Abu Tayeb. We leave Kabul and head for the Wadak province in central Afghanistan. Including a French journalist who made this report. Where a powerful Taliban commander has agreed to speak to us. He wants to show us something. But our experience would be very different. Instead of treating guests with honor, as is Afghan tradition, he kidnapped us and demanded the release of prisoners from Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, and up to $25 million in ransom. These are Taliban videos. Much of what I learned about their worldview came from watching videos like these day after day with my captors. My guards were young men in their 20s who had been brainwashed into believing they were defending Afghanistan from an attack by a vast alliance of non-Muslim countries. After a week of captivity in Afghanistan, Abu Tayyab brought us across the border into neighboring Pakistan. We drove in a station wagon for two days, and we ended up in the tribal areas of Pakistan. I realized that the hardline Islamic State that the U.S. had toppled in 2001 still exists. It simply shifted a few miles east, over the border, into Pakistan. For the next seven months, we were held prisoner in the Taliban mini-state in North Waziristan and South Waziristan. Some of our guards took classes from foreign militants on how to make roadside bombs that kill Afghan and American soldiers. The videos offered insights into a little understood group that moderate Afghans in the U.S. have been fighting since 2001. To me, the videos glorified a culture of death. My guards whispered, God is great, each time a suicide bomber perished. In the United States and Europe, death is often avoided. But while watching videos with the Taliban, it was a normal part of life, even a goal. The videos the guards seemed to like most showed suicide bombers preparing themselves for attacks and sacrificing their lives with great pride. My guards revered suicide bombers the way a young American might idolize a sports hero or movie star. They said they wanted to come to the United States and carry out suicide attacks. They jokingly asked me if I could bring them home with me. I didn't know what to say, and I told them I would have trouble getting them visas. Again, they simply smiled. They viewed me and other Americans as morally weak, fearful of death, and obsessed with worldly pleasures and riches. They said that if I truly believed in God, I would accept death. Like young men all over the world, they also watch the videos for entertainment. One night, we watched scenes from the Nicolas Cage World War II movie, Wind Talkers. On another night, we watched an HBO World War II miniseries called Band of Brothers. Pull back! We got pull back! It didn't seem to matter to our Taliban guards that the film celebrated American soldiers. They simply like to watch war movies, just like young American men. This is the story of what is happening in this forbidden zone. We also watched American films in the tribal areas, in Pakistan. including this 2006 PBS Frontline documentary. The guards beamed when their commanders appeared on the screen. 
باید در بیا تکرار نشه The Taliban even obtained copies of American video games. King Six, this is Longbow. I'm in. In our last house, they played Delta Force, a simulated combat video game. My captors played the role of American soldiers hunting down and killing Islamic militants. They enjoyed shooting down American helicopters, even though the helicopters were friendly forces in the game. When I pointed this out to them, they laughed. You know, I, um, uh, uh, This video is from YouTube. It's a montage showing George W. Bush stuttering as he tries to make a statement. I, 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 uh, uh. It's a compilation of pauses, and it was edited together. My guards believed it was a White House event where Mr. Bush tried to make a statement insulting Islam. They said God prevented Bush from being able to utter the insult. Good morning. They despised President Barack Obama more than they hated President Bush. They blamed Obama for increasing the number of drone strikes in the tribal areas and for increasing the number of American troops in Afghanistan. After seven months in captivity, we felt hopeless. We thought our captors would hold us for years. On June 20th, my Afghan colleague and I escaped from captivity. How are you? Fine. Fine? Fine. You feel good? Yes. Okay. Some cases have ended tragically, including that of Peter Stanzak, a 42-year-old Polish geologist abducted in Pakistan in September 2008. Our Taliban guards played this video of Mr. Stanzak. I walked out of the room when I realized that he was about to be decapitated. And what do you think about the people of Pakistan? I won't say people of Pakistan is very good. People is very good. Very peace people. 